What's up, everybody, and welcome back to the Slayer's Den. It's Slay Anything. Thank you guys again so much for joining me. Today, we are playing a really cool mono blue ramp deck called in standard Magic the Gathering <laughs> arena. As you may have noticed, I am speaking a little bit more quietly because it is very late at night. It's actually early in the morning, the morning after the election, in fact. I'm trying to be quiet and respectful of the people in my house, but at the same time, I do want to bring you guys some content, so I didn't want to miss out on the opportunity to do this. But yeah, overall, this is a mono blue ramp deck, and it's super fun, super cool. We'll go over some of the cards that are in it. So at the one spot, we have Soul Guide Lantern, which is a really cool artifact for one color list. It says, when Soul Guide Lantern enters the battlefield, you exile target card from a graveyard. You also sacrifice Soul Guide Lantern to exile each opponent's graveyard, which is really powerful against decks, especially like Rakdos, where they rely on their graveyard to play cards like Kroxa and Ox of Agonis. So it's really powerful there. Not only that, for one colorless, you tap it, sack it, and you can draw a card. So it's great in a pinch when we need to find a land off the top. We have plenty of two drops, and most of them are Disruption. We've got Essence Scatter to counter creature spells, Into the Royal to bounce, Jawari Disruption is another counter spell, Negate, counter some non-creature spells like Planeswalkers. We've got Maze Mind Tome, which is really great for allowing us to draw cards continuously so we can look for threats or we can look for lands, whatever we need at the time. At the three spot, we've got Brazen Borrower, which is just perfect because it serves as a way to disrupt your opponent's tempo with its petty theft ability. We also have Skyclave Relic, which is an amazing way to ramp up in a mono blue deck. For three colorless, you can create two extra tokens of Skyclave Relic. And Skyclave Relic is really cool because it just lets you add one mana of any color. So Mana Rock, super cool in this deck super powerful the four spot we've got inscription of insight which is a great sorcery costs three colorless and a blue has a kicker ability says two colorless two blue and then you can play all three abilities uh, first ability lets you return up to two target creatures to their owner's hand second ability allows you to scry two then draw two cards the third ability allows you to create a xx blue illusion creature token where x is the number of cards in your hand so really cool especially when you can kick it solemn simulacrum is a four colorless artifact creature golem that allows you to ramp up so you can search your library for an island especially when you're trying to build up to your bigger cards now the five spot we have forsaken monument which for five colorless allows us to add an additional colorless whenever we tap a permanent for a colorless so that's great with all of our colorless lands here like our crawling barons labyrinth of scophos and radiant fountains as well as throne of mckindy six plus drops include shark typhoon kiora best the sea god seagate restoration and of course ugin the spear dragon which is yeah our ultimate top end and and just the way to end games basically but yeah overall this deck seems like a total blast and i'm super hyped to play this one for you guys thank you guys again so much for taking the time out of your day to check this one out i hope you guys are doing well out there if you guys enjoyed the vid please remember to destroy the like and subscribe buttons below it's not just a great way to support my channel it allows the youtube algorithm to share this video and the rest of my videos with even more mtg fans out there and that means a ton to me because i am trying to grow the slayer's den community so thank you guys guys again so much and without further ado let's play some magic the gathering drug muffin would you like a drug muffin all right um yeah this seems like this be a worthwhile hand to keep so we'll go and keep it plain island and pass the turn over to drug muffin swarm shambler gross all right, let's go play a Crawling Barons, and we'll just pass a turn. And we're gonna negate, negate Heart's Desire. They lose two things. Hopefully the opponent really enjoyed that. Oh, so they didn't swing. No swingy. All right, so we'll play a Labyrinth of Scophos, and we'll just go next. And the turn. When it pumps up the Shambler, naturally. But let's see what else the opponent plans on doing. I think they were planning on... Oh, no swingy? No swingy at all? Alright, so we'll go in Shark Typhoon. Just create a 1-1. One, one. I'm actually cool with that. Into the Royal. Okay, pretty sweet. So we're going to play... Radiant Fountain, gain a couple of life, and we're just going to start ramping up with some Solemn Simulacrum. Grab an island. That'll help us pump up to Forsaken Monument, and yeah, we'll do no attacks. I'm going to hold up a blocker for the Swarm Shambler. 
And uh, yeah, if I can get Forsaken Monument out, then the following turn we'll have uh, Ugin the Spirit Dragon, so it's going to be pretty saucy, I feel like. Luckily, none of the creatures have, like, Trample and stuff, so I think we are in a decent spot. Okay, so we're going to play the Island, and we will play a Forsaken Monument. And, uh, yeah, just no attacks. It was a chance to Ugin the Spirit Dragon, which will be sick. They might have a gem raiser though, which could be pretty annoying. But if they do, we are only two mana away from casting Ugin naturally anyway, so could be decent. Okie dokie. So ram through my solemn simulacrum. Draw a card. So eat. Okay. Uh, yeah, we will block. <clears throat> okay. Okay, what I'd like to do is <laughs> play Ugin, gain two, just <laughs> end the game probably for Drug Muffin. Can't imagine them loving this. Get rid of everything that costs three or less their side of the field, which is everything. And we'll pass the turn. So if they have Questing Beast, that's fine, because then we can Kiora and mix up all these different spells here. It could be pretty useful. Okay. I guess we go and just destroy that. Play Kiora. And we're pretty golden. <laughs> yes. Yes, yes, yes. Yes, yes, yes. Shinji. Alright, Shinji. Tell me you're not playing rogues. Okay, we'll keep this one. You have a lot of early kind of tempo interaction, so definitely worthwhile to keep Bow Show and open up our Black Lotus. We'll play an island. Pass a turn. To Shinji. Okay, we're gonna play as a Shatter Skull, the Hammer Pass. Sweet, sweet, sweet. Um, we're gonna play a Crawling Barons. I think we're just gonna pass a turn here. Oh, it could be on Garul. Gross. Um, let's play a Radiant Fountain, and I think I'm okay with playing a Maze Mind Tome here. Because if they do play something that is saucy, we do have two bounce spells in hand, so not too worrisome. But it plays a Forest, passes the turn, okay. Very interesting. Uh, we're going to play another Radiant Fountain, apparently. Gain two life, and we're just going to go next, and in the turn. And we'll end that turn as well. Alright, Shinji, what you got going on? Questing Beast. Okay, so that resolves. And um, I think we go for the Petty Theft here. And we also draw a card. Try to get a second blue source if possible. Uh, or not. So we'll play a Throne of McKindy. And what do we want to play here? Kind of think still we just go next and the turn. We might be able to Jawari disrupt something that they play if they don't play a second land or a uh, fifth land rather. I'm going to play a questing beast. Okay. All right. Well, I guess we're going to have to do this. Bounce that. Sure. Let's go ahead and uh, draw a card. Guess why not? So we're not seeming to draw the islands that we need, which is terrible. Play the Crawling Barons, and if we let them play the Questing Beast, they swing in for five. Could also play Solemn Simulacrum to go and just grab that island. I think we might do that. Then we should go next. See what the opponent does here. The fabled passage. Okie dokie. But we lose that. We'll draw a card, sure. And I guess we'll take one here. Gross. Love struck beast. Okay. Um yeah. So it is. And so it shall be. We're going to draw with the Maze Mind Tome. 
sweet. We like that. We like the essence scatter for the questing beast. Not too shabby. I think we go inscription of insights with kicker, don't we? I like the idea of it. I also like the idea of doing Forsaken Monument though. Alright, let's do Forsaken Monument. So we get a shit ton of mana, and that's two, three, four mana right here. And I think we just go next. Yeah, let's go and Essence Scatter that. We just don't want you to have a questing beast, basically. That's that's the main issue. It's not that I'm mad at you. Just don't want the questing beast. Because we're down to 17. We're really trying to find our Ugins at this point. Once we get Ugin, then we are... I mean, as with most matches, we are Gucci. So, um, yeah, I think we just go my turn. And what I think we do is... Cast this with Kicker. Go and return those both to the hand. Target myself. Um, this could be good. Solemn Simulacrum, not as good. I wouldn't mind keeping the Kiora, actually. Not gonna lie. Um, oh, sweet. Let's go. Okay. <laughs> the opponent didn't like that. I kept sending all his shit back to his hand. <laughs> Oh my god. Alright, GG. That was fun. Yo, Hannes. Okay, so the reason to keep is because we do have counter spells, plenty of land, working our way towards a Kiora best of sea god, so yeah, we'll go and keep it. Always oh, in keep. We'll play the Temple of Malice, so we might see some Rakdos action here. Gross. Alright, we'll play an island. And we'll pass the turn and pass the germs. Meyer Triton, okay. Sweet. Let's go and play. Castle Vantress. Fun plays a swamp. Swing in for two, sure. Do what you gotta do. Alright, let's play a Radiant Fountain. Gain that two life back. Bay bay. And we'll just go next. And uh, yeah, we'll send the turn. What does the opponent got going on? Do they have flashy things? Ah, oh, man. Why'd you gotta do it? Why'd you gotta do it? Okay, so we'll just go ahead and negate that, I guess. Might as well get rid of it now, right? We'll take the two. One plays a swamp. We're gonna play... Uh, play the Radiant Fountain. Get us back to a saucy 20 HP. And, um... Play Skyclave Relic. And uh, yeah, we'll just end the turn. Yes, sir. Thrill of Possibility, you say? Okay, sure. Sure, sure, sure. Scourge of the Skyclaves. Negative two, negative two. Just like we drew it up. Okay. Let's take another two. <clears throat> um, sure. Well, let's just scatter that. Then they can't cast it, so it doesn't really matter. But it does make sure that we get to keep whatever's in our hand for now. So we'll play a Labyrinth of Scophos and uh, I think the Shark Typhoon hard cast is actually where we want to be here. So every spell we play now just hooks us up, and you gotta love it. So they have to have remo a whole lot of removal, a whole lot of tough removal. We can just draw one land. We are pretty Gucci, but uh, not gonna say anything yet. Not gonna call it quite yet. All right, Johannes, what do you got going on? So I could see them um, croak sighing here, of course. Probably a good time to. Uh, sure, sure, sure. We're going to discard the Brazen Borrower? Let's see. Um, or the Seagate Restoration. Oh man, shit. I think we got to ditch the Brazen Borrower, actually, because if we don't draw that seventh land, then we are going to need to play Seagate Restoration as a tap land, unfortunately. Okay, well, that's great. So, what we're going to do here... 
something I like to call the old switcheroo. So we tap this, 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 and then we play, I guess everything. <laughs> this goes a couple of creatures, and yeah, eventually I'll be able to tap down the Kroxa, not to mention be able to take control of the Kroxa, which will be nice. Um, yeah, so we're going to block the Kroxa here. Okay. So they can't really bring back the Kroxa, which is nice for us. They can't play that. There we go. And that's fine, I think. I want to say it would be worthwhile to play Shark Typhoon out right now. Because it gets a 6-6 six, six out. And then the opponent's not going to play anything, clearly. So then I can at least swing in. Murderous Rider, sure. Okay. And the turn. Sweet. Let's go and take Temple of Malice. And yeah, we might as well do this, huh? So let's go ahead and... Or do we wait till something's... Uh, let's see. I think we gotta play it right now because they will Kroxa. Huh? Alright, so let's just do this. Um... Okie dokie. So if we can keep this Ugin, I mean, that would be superb, obviously. But we do have a shit ton of creatures on the board. A lot of sharks. Beautiful, beautiful sharks. Hunted Nightmare. Okay. Sure. Play a Radiant Fountain. And do we just play this? Well, I think we can just play this straight out, right? Sure. Just do three to the opponent. <laughs> okay, opponent agonizing remorses me, removes that, sure. But uh, yeah, I think the opponent's done for here. Maybe not. Oh yeah, they are, for sure. GG. Oh man, that was nice. That was pretty sick. Two eight eights, two four fours, and an Ugin. Twas busted. So busted. Thorak one seventeen. <laughs> All right. So this hand is some hot garbage for sure. So we're gonna keep it. We are gonna keep it. We're just gonna play tap lands. That's the way it has to go. Um, we're going to play Seagate Reborn, and we're going to play that tapped. Impassioned Orator. Oh, no. Quite. Alright, so we're going to play a Radiant Fountain. We'll just end the turn here. Okay, so you're going to be taking a bit more. I was going to be gaining a bit more life. Gross. Um, I guess we can just go ahead and create a 1-1 one -one here. And just block the Speaker of the Heavens at least, right? Might be worthwhile. And another Gryphonary. Sure. Alright. Um, so what do we want here? I think the Crawling Barons could be good. We could double Jawari Disruption something significant in the opponent's hand. That'd be worthwhile. I think it might be more worthwhile to actually Solemn Simulacrum here. Oh, we can ramp up toward the Oogs. We'll grab an island. Banishing Light. Okay, sweet. Basically, we're just wasting a lot of their shit. Just fantastic. Love it. You'll love to see it. One, two, three, four, five. I think we can play a Forsaken Monument. And we could play a 
Jawari Disruption. Mall of the Skyclave, sweet. We are in like Flynn. Play Crawling Barons, and let's just Ugin and remove everything on the board. <laughs> let's go. Peace. Then I guess I'll guess I'll look for a land. <laughs> yes. Oh my god, that was sick. Sick, sick, sick. Ah oh man. Ugin's fun, guys. Bet you didn't know that one. Bad E Meister. I'm the baddie meister. Okie dokie. So, do we keep is the question. We have two lands, bounce, potential card draw. We're gonna keep it. Come what may, right? Come what may. Okie dokie. Uh, yep. Play an island, and I think we're just gonna go next. End the turn. Opponent might be playing Rakdos, so if they are, then the Soul Guide Lantern is gonna be pretty nice, I feel like. We're getting rid of a, um, like a Kroxa or something. Yep. Sweet. Alright, so we just need to draw lands. Give us some lands. And the turn. Meyer Triton? Croxa. Yes, let's go. Sure. Gonna discard um, an inscription. Sure. So let's play Soul Guide Lantern. <laughs> Get rid of the Croxa. this as a land and yeah, we'll just pass it's another graveyard strategy is a little bit weakened by have me having a soul guide lantern out really just getting rid of that croxo is so worthwhile hopefully they weren't relying on that too heavily bone crusher okay sure cool story bro sweet all right so now that we've got four let's go in solemn simulacrum and grab the fifth land Next, end the turn. I'm always worried when I play Solemn Simulacrum since it asks you if you want to take the action now, if that I accidentally like cancel it or something. Definitely a concern, faux show. Goes on stupid. All right, so Bone Crusher Giant, sure. So what are the chances of a second Bone Crusher in hand? Uh, let's see, so my turn. Let's go ahead and play. Let's play Forsaken Monument. That way the opponent has to use their Bone Crusher. Oh, well, I guess not. Okay, so we just go next. And we do no attacks at the turn. Let's see this up as a blocker. Now I have access to six mana currently, which allows me to use Inscription, you know, to bounce things. Also good with discarding if necessary. Get rid of a Forsaken Monument, I guess. We already got one on the field. You got it. Yes. Boy, howdy. Alright, uh, let's see. So nothing in there that I want to get rid of necessarily, so my turn. Mm-hmm. Okay, so it's three, four, five. <sighs> Goodness. Okay, so if I play this, that'll leave me with, what, four mana? Okay, sure. We'll do it. Ooh, you're tempting me with this, though. Um, yes, we're gonna do it. We're gonna gain the life anyway. And we we'll just go next. End the turn. This does give me enough mana to Ugin, so that's a wonderful thing. And I think I'm okay with getting rid of, like, the... into the royal here, probably, just because I do have enough mana to cast most of the spells in my hand at this point. This should be pretty good. Um, so, let's see. I think we're just going to go my turn. Play an island, and if we shark Typhoon, that's two, three, four, five, six, one, two, three, four. That gives me enough to insight. Or do I just do the Ugin? I think I just do Ugin and just destroy the Rankle right now. I think I might be okay with that. That way, if they have like a Murderous Rider or whatever. Oh, that's fine. Okay, so they get to draw two cards. Sure. And we end the turn. Do not ignore my draconic talents. Uh, yeah, that's fine. Um, hmm. 
Hmm, what to do here? What to do here? Um, yeah, my turn. Let's play the Fountain. Let's play a Shark Typhoon. Just hard cast it, I think. Three, four, five, six. This isn't enough to really profit off of Inscription of Insight too heavily, so I think we're just gonna go next. Yeah, four, hold up. If we do this, we can draw a ton. We draw two and create a four, four. That might be worthwhile, actually. Yeah, we do that. Scry two, draw two. Okay, don't want that. I'll keep the essence scatter just so I can counter something. Didn't really want that too badly, but uh, it's fine. Whatever. Okay, so we have an essence scatter for a creature. Uh, sure. No, another village rights, I'm assuming. Yep. Okay. Well, that's kind of annoying. Uh, let's see. What do they got here? I think first we... Essence scatter that. Create a 2-2. Two, two. And let's see. The opponent can't do anything, so we'll just go ahead and... Get rid of their graveyard. Including their beautiful Kroxa. And we'll swing it for two. Play Crawling Barons. Uh, we're just gonna end the turn. May have been stupid actually to hold the Ugin now that I think about it, but I think having Crawling Barons is gonna be pretty nice. It will be a game changer. Bo Shao. So they crack the Fabled Passage. Let's go and pump this up. Decline. Pump this up, decline, and pump it up once more, and decline. So let's go ahead and um, think we can do both, can we? Let's see. Take action. Swing in for 12, I guess. I think this should be GG though, honestly. Yeah, looks like it. Meyer Triton, sure. Gain some life. I might have called it too early, but who knows. Village Rice, they sack. Do they've got what it takes? I don't know. I think this is it, this is game. They could have a claim, which could pull this. Blood Chief Surf's perfect. You love to see it. So we swing in. Look in here. Perfection is a journey, not GG. Consider <laughs> this. <laughs> yes. Uh GG bad E Meister MTG. Yeah, that was fun. Definitely, definitely fun. I definitely had a good time. Jay Quema. Jonathan Quema. Okie dokie. Uh, yeah, we will keep this one. On behalf of the Jay Quema and Associates, we will keep this hand. Alright, hopefully we can make this a good one. Uh, yeah, we'll play an island. And we'll just pass the turn. And pass the germs. Okay, Joe Quema's taking his time here, but it's fine. I'm gonna say hello to your avatar. I guess not. Say hi to my Black Lotus. Yeah, but I'm going to play a mountain. Always scary. Um, we're going to play a another island. Sure. We'll just go next. And the turn. See if the opponent is on some mono red. Maybe gruel shenanigans. All right, Jake Wemma. What do we got going on? Okay, they play another mountain. So maybe mono red, but also maybe not. <laughs> okay, so we're going to play a crawling barons. We're just gonna go next. What does Jaquema have up their sleeve? It's very rare to see a mono red deck that doesn't play anything the first two turns, right? It's kind of weird. Almost a little unsettling. Might have to touch the Black Lotus on this one, guys. Might have to touch the Black Lotus on this one. Okay, so end the turn, sure. Oh, the Black Lotus dies. Oh, that makes sense. After one use of the Black Lotus. That's real cool. I haven't really fucked around with this uh, pet yet. Alright, so opponent's really struggling here to get um, anything going on, it looks like. 
They played two mountains. Bone Crusher. Okay, so let's go negate that. Negating it is a two for one, so we like that. And then anything else we can, next turn we can like bounce it, we can, we've got options, I suppose. Another good thing would have been to not negate there and essence scatter when they play it on their turn. But honestly, at this point, I'm just trying to get Jake Wimma to get a move on, get a step on it, because uh, he is running the clock. If this were a timed event, this would be a very, um, very slow process, I, I suspect. All right, heraldic banner, sure. Okay, go for it. So, what is this is Jay Quema doing? I'm very, I'm curious now. You have my attention. All right, so we're gonna play Radiant Fountain, gain a couple of life. Now we're at a point where we can just counter a whole bunch of shit, or we can create a two-two shark typhoon token. We have our options. I suspect, however, if I don't draw a land, I'm probably going to Inscription of Insight on my turn to Scry 2, draw 2, and just hopefully work our way up from there. Um, hmm. I don't like that. That's kind of annoying, right? Yeah, we'll get rid of that. That's naughty. Let's just go ahead and do this. Just to draw a card, I think. Um, or... Yeah, we'll just do it to draw a card. And that's fine. Perfect. So we didn't need to go too crazy here. Uh, let's see, 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 see. So, maybe we just go next. End the turn. And if they have another Brash Taunter but no other land, Jawari Disruption could be pretty sweet. Yeah, okay, maybe not. Heraldic Bear. Gross. Um, shoot, I don't like that they're getting all this mana, but is it that big of an issue is the question. I think we just go ahead and negate this, to be honest. I know it's kind of crazy. I know it sounds crazy, but hear me out. I don't like that they're going to get a bunch of mana rocks and then all their 1-1s one or whatever they play are going to get plus 2 plus 0. That's a lot of, uh, that's a lot of value. It's kind of scary. Alright, so we play Throne of McKindy and... Um, one, two, three. We play this and we draw and scry, I think. Okay, we don't want any more lands, please. Perfect. Perfect, perfect, perfect. And um yeah, we'll go and maze mine tome here. I think I'm okay with that. Opponent might have another bone crusher giant to do two damage to us. Or just shredded sails. Hey, you could have destroyed my uh, Maze Mind Tome there, though. Alright, so they cycle their Shredded Sails. I do have six mana available, which means I can kick Skyclave Relic. It's going to be an additional three. So I'll be in good range to where I can start playing Ugins and Kiora Best the Sea Gods and such, so it might be worthwhile. Okay, um, another thing I can do is Hardcast Shark Typhoon, which would be pretty good, I'd say. Um, so this one is a toughie, for sure. So if we do this, we really risk them playing Ugin. That's four, five, six, seven. Oh, fuck. Okay. So my better judgment is telling me to hold up the mana for an Ugin, because this deck is a very non-traditional red deck. Um, so we'll go ahead and draw. Okay, opponent's thinking about it. Sweet like that. We're going to put a charge counter on Throne of McKindy. Okay, and my turn. So let's play a Crawling Barons, and alright, so what do we do here? We've got three, four, five, six, seven mana available, so that is a um, significant amount. We could play Cure Best of Sea God. Gives us an 8-8 hexproof, so I don't imagine there's anything the opponent can do aside from play Ugin here. Which it's, it's, seems very likely for some reason that that's kind of their answer here. Don't think it's Brash Taunter all the way. However, um, in two turns, I do have the ability to steal an Ugin, steal a Brash Taunter even if I need to. So, our work is not done, but I think Cure Best of Sea God definitely lets us play out some threats that we want. Okay, so no Ugin. That's pretty cool. At least not yet. Alright, Bone Crusher Giant, sure. That will be tapped down, so that's nice. 
Temp, so Bone Crusher gets tapped down. And um, yeah, swinging for eight, because why not? Bone got something saucy in their hand. Sweet. And I believe one, two, three, four. We'll play Shark Typhoon hard cast. So give us more options moving forward. So yeah, think I'm okay with that. So we'll take their Bone Crusher. The opponent did the Sad Hedron. Always a sad thing. <laughs> now they did the Angry Hedron. That's hilarious. You love to see it. Alright, so we're swinging for 8. I don't think the opponent's going to like the uh, second Shark Typhoon that I cast either. I think the scoop is incoming. What do you guys think? Jayquima. Yes, if I were in Jayquima's shoes, I think the scoop might be incoming. Yeah, let's go in the turn. Fire Emancipation. Beautiful. You'll love to see it, and you also hate to see it though. Cinderclasm. Okay. <laughs> oh my god. GG, homie. Pour one out for you, because I love to see a Fire Emancipation deck. I really do. <laughs> Okay, good game. Ah, uh, that was good. That was good. Very well done, Jake Wimma. I believed in you. And that's actually a super cool way to end today's videos because I did get to show you both the Sea God part and also the Spirit Dragon part with Ugin. So yeah, deck is super fun, super powerful. I really enjoyed it. All right, folks, this looks like the perfect place to end the videos. And dang, I had so much fun playing this deck. This deck was actually really cool for a mono blue deck. Not only that, it was, felt pretty powerful once you got everything online. Just, of course, the beauty of a ramp deck. You ramp up and you start playing your big spells like Cure, Best of Sea God, and Ugin the Spear Dragon, and just take over from there. Usually my opponent scooped. So yeah, I had a ton of fun playing this one. I hope you guys enjoyed it as much as I enjoyed playing it. Thank you guys again so much for taking the time out of your day to watch this video. I hope you guys are doing well out there. And if you guys did enjoy the video, please remember to destroy the like and subscribe buttons below. It's not just a great way to support my channel. It allows the YouTube algorithm to share this video and the rest of my videos with even more MTG fans out there. And that means a ton to me because I am trying to grow the Slayer's Den community. So thank you guys again so much, and I'll see you in the next one. Thank you guys so much for checking out the video. If you enjoyed it, please remember to smash that like button below and to help you stay up to date with my upcoming videos, make sure to hit that subscribe button as well. Thanks again, have a great day, and I'll catch you guys in the next one. Peace out, Slayers.